Next question. How many of you have a true study or library in your place of residence? Okay. Two? Two of you, if I'm seeing correctly. I've always envied that. A quiet place to actually do reading or studying, okay? I'm going to make a prediction. Many of you study in your bedroom, okay? How many of you study in your bedroom? We'll raise high so everybody can see. Mm -hmm. That's where I studied a lot, especially when I did go to community college. If you don't study in your bedroom, hmm, I bet some of you study at the dining room table slash kitchen table or bar. How many study at the dining, kitchen, bar? Okay. Now, if you don't study in those two places and you don't have a study or library, you study in the family room, rec room, living room, the place where your TV and stereo is, your couch, your easy chair. How many study there? Okay. Now, some of you might actually drive to a school or library. Any of you do that? Go to a, okay, a few of you do. Now, a piece of research done at University of Hawaii. Researchers asked the students, what's the biggest problem with studying? They said, we can't get into it. The university in question had primarily dorm rooms. Very few commuter students to the university. Most of you have seen a dorm room. <laughs> oh, okay. Most of you have seen a dorm room. They're usually rectangular if it's a tuplex. One side bed, another side of bed, everything kind of mirror image. Study area, study area, right? You got a closet or wardrobe. So it's real interesting. In one room, you sleep, you groom, you talk with people, you socialize, you study, you snack. You're all in one room. It's a multi purpose room. And yet you're supposed to study. If your door is open, what happens? Everybody, hey, Lobdell, what's up? You know, and then they got to come in and talk to you. Very quickly, you can't get to studying. Well, the professors heard that the students couldn't get into studying, but they knew what the dorms looked like. In the Hawaiian dorms, all of the rooms had a gooseneck lamp. So the professor said, we're going to try a little experiment. Take that lamp, make a little sign, and put it on it, study lamp. Okay? Use it only for studying. You don't dress by it, you don't, you don't snack by it, you don't clean the room by it, nothing. You use the other lights for all other functions. Here's the way it works, and it's so easy. Every one of you can do this. Get a little lamp. You probably have one already. If you don't, my gosh, yard sale, garage sale, you can pick them up for nothing. Get that lamp, and it becomes your study lamp. So if you have to study in your bedroom, turn your desk away from the bed. That's the like, how many been to the mall? It makes you want to go to sleep. By the way, you can't study in the bed. It's also bad for your back if you know about posture. Turn your back to the bed, have a blank wall, have your lamp, have your books ready to go, because you can futz away a lot of time getting ready, can't you? How many of you can futz and futz? Yeah. You're ready to go, turn on the lamp, and start studying. The moment you lose your edge, 15, 20, 30 minutes later, turn the lamp off, get up, and leave the desk. What you're training yourself to study while seated there. And it becomes increasingly automatic, as did the raising of the hand. You sit, turn the lamp on, and you're ready to go. It's like magic. The students who did that were one grade point higher the next term compared to the control group that didn't do it. One grade point simply by creating a study area. The living area, I'm going to tell you, you can do this experiment. You try to study in the living room, and you're focused, and other people are listening to music, watching a movie, watching TV, they won't leave you alone. Hey, Marty, Marty, look, 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 it's really good. Excuse me, I'm studying. And then they get angry at you. <laughs> well, boo on you, too. <laughs> you can't study in the living area. It's not designed for that, unless you're all by yourself. And you turn off the TV, turn down the stereo so it's truly background. If you're singing along to your favorite song, you're not studying. You're singing along to a song. Your brain has to be focused to be really studying, not time sharing back and forth between singing and studying. So living areas, very tough to create. But if that's where you have to do it, you bring your little study lamp in, everything else off, turn on your study lamp, and create a study there. Are you getting the idea? Now, I'm going to go through a lot of suggestions. 
Break it up into small chunks, reinforce it. Simple to do. Create a study area. Simple to do. And you'll be amazed if you take these ideas and do them. I'm going to make a challenge to all of you. It's so easy to sit through a presentation, say, yeah, yeah, that sounds good, and then walk away and do nothing. Technically, as a psychologist, if it doesn't change your behavior, you haven't learned it. It's just in your head. To be a true learning experience, you have to behave differently. So my hope is you all make a promise. I'll try at least one or two of what I talk about today. And when you find out it works, say, gosh, I'll try a third one, maybe a fourth. I went back to grad school in the mid-80s. Second time around, I actually aced every class. PLU gives pluses. I got pluses in all but one class. I didn't do that first time. Okay? I was a good student, but not that good. I used the principles I learned about in teaching psych to become a student. And I wish somebody had told me these things when I was a student the first time. It would have been a lot easier. OK, so we've got two things going. Break your study up into little pieces with reinforcement. Create a study area if you don't have one. I think you said you do have a study. There you go.